me and the crew here. We're coming out here to look at a Detroit 50 series and a hay squeeze and crank no start. I uh I videoed rebuilding the engine in this thing like three or four years ago. I in framed it. This poor old hay squeeze, these guys so abuse this thing. I mean, it breaks my heart after you rebuild an engine like that and you see it because they're, they're neighbors to me they're good guys i mean but man it's, it's just another big outfit and, you know they got so many different people running the equipment and, but they'll they'll start that they'll start that hay squeeze and they'll load like their feed wagon or something and i counted it one day one day i mean this happens like every day they'll just sit there and let that thing idle for like four hours nobody around just leave it there You know, and you're sitting there thinking, you know, for one thing, idling an engine all day long is not very, very good. Uh, you got low oil pressure. You're not building enough heat to have complete combustion, so it's hard on them. Anyway, it is what it is. I guess if they like throwing their money away and rebuilding engines all the time, I guess it's good for me. But. These 50 series Detroits, they're pretty much the same engine as the 60 series, 12.7 liter. Is The only difference is they're four cylinders and they have a counterbalance assembly on the bottom of the block. So, uh, you'll, no, you'll notice that most four cylinder inline engines have counterbalance assemblies on them. Uh, versus a six cylinder, because of the vibrations. So anyways, let me come over here. I've got an old 60 series service manual there. And uh, I've already been out here once and I didn't have my service manual. So it's only about a mile or two back to the shop. So I ran over there to grab the service manual. I'm pretty certain we lost the ECM, but I want to make sure. So I've already hooked my scan tool. This has got an 06 pin connector which is j1708 uh, protocol and i got power and ground it powers up my data link connector my pass-through unit but one of these pins you'll i don't remember which um which one it is but you'll usually i'll have like a volt volt and a half of uh it's basically the ccd line the communication line and only got a half a volt and that's usually when you see a half a volt there it's usually a pretty good indication that you've lost the ECM. So down here, we have the ECM power harness, which is going to be this one down here. I had to get the connector popped out. It's recessed in there. And you can see that the ECM is just bouncing around in there. So. Anyway, there is our five-way ECM power harness. So I need to get my meter, actually, because we want to check from pin to pin to see if we have the right voltage. So if you're reading the book here... Measure and record voltage from socket A, which would be this one right here. Two power harness connector. Is there, I don't see a black lead in here. Let's see with the power probe. Let's figure out which one the ground is. I would say that one's the ground. would say that's the ground. Okay. It says black lead, but they put all white wires in the dirty bastard, so who the hell knows, huh? Every one of those wires is white. Let's go with, we know that A should be have 12 volts there. OK, 
Okay, and then it tells you to measure and record voltage from socket C to a good ground. Black lead. Yeah, there we go. Socket C is this one down here. Twelve volts there. Okay. So review the measured voltage readings. If the voltage measured is less than ten volts, inspect and repair harness. If the voltage measured is greater than ten volts, check for low battery voltage, which that's not the case. Power harness repair, test the engine, most repaired power harness, attempt to start and run the engine. If the engine starts and runs, no further troubleshooting is required. If the engine fails to start run, check empty fuel tank, which I don't think that would be the case. Empty fuel tank, low fuel resolution, test with filled tank, low battery voltage, uh, tested with repaired terminals, is there like a no communications thing? Anywhere. So we know we have power and ground. What? So that's pin pin A and C. What are the other two pins doing here? That's a ground. That's a ground. So it kind of appears to me that the ECM has the power required. To make it work and I have no communication in the cab I'm pretty much pointing towards the ECM but are we getting fuel so uh, there's our fuel pump a little gear pump off the back right there God, looks like they put a brand new one on there somebody changed that and put a brand new one on there Huh. Well, one should be coming from the tank, and one should be going up to. I'm trying to remember how these worked on these 50 series. Where did the fuel come into it? Was this return or supply going into the head? There should have been one, yeah. Let me uh, put my book away. These would be a return fitting. These Detroits had what they called an R80 fitting in the back of the head. They restricted the return pull back to tank. There's a throttle relay. I would say that my relays and everything are fine in here because I have the right voltage going to the ECM. Okay. I would think that this would be the supply line. Yep, and this one here is going to be coming off the R80 fitting, going back. So, let's just uh, see if we get any fuel coming out of there when we crank on it. Let's loosen it up. Kind of a bear to climb up on. Okay, I'll just well, hell just take the hose and stick it out here and see if anything comes out of this little bit, huh? 
pretty simple way to look at things. I'll just sit out here and if it's the right pressure but can I put a gauge on there maybe and and see if that is an issue I could deadhead that and just see but I mean I'm pretty certain that lost the ECM and that's what it looks like to me there's fuel going to it I don't really know where a guy could check pressure other than teeing into this thing or deadheading the gauge and just seeing what kind of pressure we get. Maybe I might be able to rig something up here. Hang on. Uh, these kind of tees right here are pretty handy. So what we can do, you can. this has got a CompuCheck fitting that's teed into this female and male JIC connector. So what we can do is take this and screw it back onto the back of the head and hopefully there's enough room to get a, a fitting on there i don't know it's going to be tight and then we can check our gear pump pressure i'm gonna have to put my jumper cables on it though i can tell where did the freaking wrench go I do what the hell did I do with the end wrench? <sighs> that on there, and then we'll run this back around over to here. so easy I'm gonna have to come out the back side of this harness to get it hooked up okay then I'm gonna have to fire it up put my jumper cables on there I need to see if I can find a I should have a gauge. I'll have to look in the book and see what the specification is, but see if we can rig up a gauge somehow to it. Compu check fitting. Uh, what do I have in my arsenal here? Uh, here's a compu check fitting, quarter inch pipe. I need to do something here. Hang on a minute. All right, so I got a zero to 100 PSI gauge. My hose rigged up here. Let's see what we get here. Oh, it's not even making the needle bounce, huh? What to think about this? What to think about this? Well, I'm back here at this Roadrunner hay squeeze, and uh, I'm going to put the gauge back on it, and I want to see um, with they put new batteries in it. I don't know is it going to turn. I'm going to put my Noco boost <laughs> booster on it as well, but. 
Just want to see if it's going to spin faster or for the starter screwed up too. And that's better than it was. So we'll put the NOCO booster on it. And I got a five gallon bucket with a hose that we're going to put right here on the suction side of the gear pump and suck right out of the bucket and go right to the head. So let me get set up here. All right, so we're sucking right out of the bucket here. We got a gauge on it. I got it cracked up by the head. I just want to make sure that I'm getting fuel. That's, I want to crank on it a little bit. I got the NOCO booster on it. Even on the new batteries, I might put my battery cables on there too in a little bit, but I just want to make sure we don't ruin new batteries. Put this up here. We're not going to get nothing now. So let's crank on a little bit, see if we can get it primed up. This hose full of fuel and get fuel coming out there. Tried to start, so that's kind of telling me that we're sucking air somewhere. I think. Okay, because we're basically bypassing both filters and going right into the cylinder head. So let's put a gauge on. Let's watch the gauge. Let's see what we get here. Get anything on this gauge. Well, maybe it was some ETH or somebody uh, squirted in there. Must have been some ether somebody squirted in there because they had a whole bunch of cans of ether sitting out here when I got here. Do we have any fuel here? I mean, I didn't even see the gauge move at all, but I'm not sure if this Detroit works like that or not. The starter is not very good, I'll tell you that. Is this thing primed or? Can't really tell. Can't really tell that it's doing anything. Let me see if that thing's squirting fuel at all out of there. Out of here. See what it's doing there. So I stand here and crank on it. Look out the window, see if there's any fuel moving at all. Can't see the bastard. I don't give a shit if I squirt a little fuel on that. There's nothing coming out of there. So I'm gonna have to try to get fuel in this hose somehow. Yeah, I should just be sucking it right in through there. I gotta get this hose primed somehow. Uh, let me figure out what I'm gonna do to do that. Hmm. So I left that hose off and I squirted WD-40 down in that line to get fluid in the line and then it took off and fuel started squirting out the hose and I cranked on it so I should have something happening there now but I don't know we'll see what happens <laughs>
tell me so 517 kilopascals parentheses 65 to 75 pounds inch squared is that psi when you go over here it tells you to the fuel pump may, should maintain the fuel pressure as shown in the maintenance section refer to section 11.5 we go over to 11.5 in this other book fuel pressure at secondary filter outlet normal with an 80 thousandths restriction there's an uh, r80 fitting and the return line of the head it's supposed to be 75 psi is that 75 psi 50 in parentheses What the hell is going on here? Because I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any pressure out of that system. I mean, is that right? I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with the 75 pounds inch squared. I think that's psi. I think it's kind of goofy. Let me look and see if there's something to explain. Is there? bullshit here it's on their specifications the pressure relief valve where is this pressure relief valve at oh you son of a bitch <clears throat> fucking man Drive assembly of the gear case, install fuel pump bolts, using new gas, can install any other components. They're really not telling you what these. shitty that they don't show you it's got to be it's a drive coupling back to injectors there number 17 plug 14, 15, 16, 13 is the relief valve. Apparently it's in the side of the body of the pump. That's what they're showing there. Huh. Somebody stuck a new pump in there, but Unless that valve's on the other side of the pump. I don't see shit in this side. There's nothing there. Let's look on the bottom, I guess, and see. Why is there two lines coming off the top? Is this... the book says the fuel flow comes out it sucks from the tank and it goes or sucks from the primary fuel filter then it discharges through the secondary fuel filter see I see some kind of plug on the bottom I wonder if that's the relief valve or if it's stuck open
looks like they had that out of there. That almost looks like the old one. I'm gonna pull that out of there. See if that valve is stuck open. So here's the relief valve. It was assembled correctly. There's a little spacer, which is that little button right there. And it goes in the plug like so. I've already brake cleaned this stuff off. And that's a little bitty bastard. And then 16 is obviously going to be the O-ring. And then the pin, well, you would you would stick the spring on there is what you would do. And then stick the pin and stick her down there in the hole. Now the wind's going to blow the opposite direction. You son of a bitch. What's number six? Passage to head of relief valve suction side. Passage to head relief valve pressure side. Dowel hole, body. Hmm. Okay. Passage relief valve suction side. Don't really, there ain't much that can really go wrong with this thing. So, it goes down in there nice and smooth. Shouldn't stick or anything. All that's going to do when the pressure gets high enough, it's going to collapse the spring. And relief. Hmm. What is going on with this thing? Why isn't it building any pressure? Is there something? What I'm questioning is, is what is the deal with the two outlets? in out should i cap the top outlet and see if it builds any pressure why not huh? is it going to blow the damn filter head off of it i don't know the other one must be going back to tank so part of the fuel goes back to tank part of it goes to the filter head and back through the filter head yeah i already ran into the cylinder head This is a new pump, and they stuck a new one on there. Hmm. I'm just wondering if I should split this pump body and look at it and see if something went through it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna pop this pump body apart real quick just to make sure while I got it out. With all the stuff that I've gotten here lately that's been new parts and it's been junk, I just don't trust anything to be honest with you. Maybe like this right here maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's a new pump or what? Yeah. God, I 
like this is a new pump. I mean, it's got scratches in here. I mean, on a fuel pump, it does not take much. I mean, but there is a little, there's a little scratch in there. So this one on the suction side, so that would have been this one. It's got needle bearings for instead of bushings, which is a really good idea. Hmm. <laughs> One's gonna be on the shaft and you're not going to get it out of there but there's a relief valve and I see how that works now yeah man I don't know I need to call him it looks like a new pump to me remanufacturing east fuck me man I bet it's just it doesn't take much on one of these gear pumps there's, there's scratches in here man up inside here and on a gear pump that don't take a uh, fuel a, a fuel gear pump that don't hardly take anything to make those go to shit and not build pressure i bet that pump is junk remanufactured piece of shit pump sucking right out of a bucket and I can't get it to I'm questioning things though here's what I did the other day that I didn't show you guys I capped the discharge line going into the cylinder head and the pump built pressure so if the pump was bad it would have never built pressure like that is my thinking if you had enough wear internally here it would leak back to the suction side of the pump or whatever it wouldn't build pressure it cavitate so is there a filter bypass valve or something maybe we need to bypass that fuel filter and then see if we get pressure there because i had a lot of when i pulled the suction line off my my hose I had rigged up was primed. I mean, all kinds of fuel came out of there, and it, it was primed. Now I'm probably going to have to do it again, but... All right, so I got... It disconnected from the back of the cylinder head, and I've got a plug in the T, and my gauge hooked onto it, and I'm basically, and I've got the uh, secondary filter bypass, and I'm going from the gear pump right to the end of this this gauge. So I'm going to crank on it here, and as you'll see, it it's not hardly doing anything. I think I the most I got out of it, it went up to like like. Right there, it went up to like 45 PSI, and then it dropped down to 40 PSI, and it just kind of hung out there. But it, I mean, a gear pump like that, it ought to come up to the relief setting, the 75, and just hang out there, is what it should do, especially deadheading it. So, uh, I think what's going on here is that the pumps, it's got to be junk, uh, I, I really don't see any other way. I mean, that air compressor driving that pump, I would think, because when you're cranking on it, you can hear air. It's trying to build air. You can hear the dash control valve leaking, so that tells me the air compressor is turning. I mean, the, the crankshaft would have to be broken, the air compressor, for this thing to be slipping. It's not spined or anything. I looked that up. It just comes right off the back of the crank of the air compressor, so... Anyways, it looks like they sold him a bad pump is kind of where I'm pointing at right now, but 
I don't know if that was the original problem, if it wasn't the ECM. I'm still a little skeptical that they just changed the pump and then they gave them a bad pump and we're going the wrong direction here. And it makes you wonder if this, here's the Lovejoy coupler. Here's the coupler on the compressor. Well, that's on the compressor, or that's, that's on the fuel pump end. I mean, could the drive on the compressor, I, I just can't see that. That's all solid. And to me, the shaft would have to be broke or something inside the compressor. Hmm. I don't know about this one, guys. It's kind of weird. I mean, I grabbed the end of that hub on that compressor, and it was solid. There wasn't nothing loose in there like it was slipping or anything. It was solid. I think he got a bad pump. I really do.